This is Mavericks All Access with Omaha Athletics, hosted by Anna Bellinghausen. Welcome to Mavericks All Access. Anna Bellinghausen with you and Mike Gabnett, head coach for the hockey team. Coach, how are you doing today? Yeah, doing great. How are you doing? Doing awesome. Always great to have you on the show. We'll start off with what the past weekends have meant. Obviously, had a bye week. How has it been having that time off and just getting those practices in? Yeah, we were just talking about, I think it was good. We came back from the break and, you know, had two, three, four practices and right into game action. So kind of nice to have a normal week and let the guys get some of the rust off and get back into game shape and, and be prepared for conference play coming up. You rang in the new year with a series against St. Lawrence. You split it. I want to talk about the event, though, around the New Year's Eve day and everything like that. Having the fans stay down till midnight and the players were hanging out on the ice with the fans as well. What did it mean seeing all that? Yeah, it was great. I think anytime we get a chance to interact with our fans and just expose them to the, the type of people we have with our program is a positive thing. And you could I couldn't believe the number of people that stuck around after the game to, to celebrate with the team and get on the ice and sign autographs and spend time together. And again, I think uh, that's what Omaha is about a little bit, right? We don't have professional teams in the city and we have all that great support for our university programs. And so to have that interaction with the fans after a big win was, uh, was a beautiful evening. Yeah, the support is evident. Fourth in this college hockey league at all with attendance at Baxter Arena pretty impressive throughout the nation what is that a testament to about this community well, I think it starts with our administration, you know, with a conservative effort to, to fill the building and to really make sure they're promoting our product on the ice. And then ultimately, like I just mentioned, the fans, the community support coming out and, and cheering on their, their hometown team. So all that uh, meshed together results in a great crowd. And mm-hmm. and like you said, fourth in the country attendance, which is pretty special. And so it's it's awesome. You know, the guys really love playing in front of a full crowd. Uh, the energy you can feel in the building, the, you know, the arena's packed and and uh, just a tremendous place to play uh, to play home games. And you've got a CBS game on Friday as well. How have you seen the game grow on the national scale as well? Yeah, you know, you're seeing it with college hockey, right? Teams are popping up all over the country. They're, you know, continuing to add teams and hockey's growing, whether it's the West Coast or the East Coast, and which is great for the sport. And I think the more, you know, diversified you get all over the country with teams and playing and uh, the sport continues to grow, which as a coach you love to see. And so hopefully we can just continue that direction and, you uh, uh, keep exposing it nationally. This team stands at nine, nine, and two, and then fourth in the NCHC NCHC rankings. How do you evaluate where your squad is right now? Yeah, you know what? It's been kind of a, a, a unique year with a lot of parity in college hockey. I think going into this season, um, if you would have told me our our non conference schedule is as tough as it is, with you know Alaska being in the top twenty and and uh, Niagara being a top 30 team and things like that. So we really haven't had a lot of easy non-conference games. And then vice versa, you know, to be fourth in NCHC is a pretty good accomplishment for Mm -hmm. the first half of the year. And to be right in the mix uh, for home ice advantage has been awesome. So uh, lots of ups and downs, but really, I think we knew that going in with a a lot of new players, we'd we'd face some adversity, but I love the group and we continue to grow and and be in tight games. And we just got to find ways to keep improving. And now Minnesota Duluth is in town this weekend. It feels like a team that's kind of in the same spot you guys are they're fifth in the NCHC rankings tied there how do you assess what this matchup will be you play them in November but now maybe two different teams coming into this yeah I mean they're uh, they've been a premier team in in college hockey for the last five six seven years mm-hmm. and and this year they're no different when you look at their roster they have the talent there and and again just even pre-scouting them they've been in a lot of those games where they're they just played Bemidji and I think at one point you know they're they're out shooting them they're out playing them but the score is close and uh, so they're, they're definitely not a team to take lightly. They're mm-hmm. going to be ready to go. And, and uh, we're looking forward to, to hosting them here for, for non-conference. What do you think the differences will be between that first series you split with them back in November, November versus right now and just the growth you've seen from your own team? Uh, I think probably both teams have improved a little bit since that first series. And uh, like you said, for us, I think just some of that valuable experience we've had with mm-hmm. going to Denver now and playing Western Michigan, having some really tough, hard-fought series, I think that kind of prepares you for that that close play that you find in the NCHC. So right. we got to draw on that and, and, you know, learn from our past mistakes and the past thing we've done correctly and bring that into this series this weekend. There's some guys I want to ask you about. The first being Ty Mueller, the impact that he's had. Only a sophomore, second in points on the team. How have you seen him grow? 
Yeah, again, he's a guy that was uh, was out of the lineup to start last season as a freshman and, and just one of those rare guys that takes personal responsibility for himself and doesn't make excuses, isn't looking for blaming somebody else or complaining about what he's not getting and, and focusing on what he does have available to him. And, and now he's kind of morphed into that number one center role for us this year and obviously producing offensively, being strong defensively. And, and to me, he's a big-time college hockey player that's got a bright future here. So couldn't be more happy for Ty to have success as a sophomore here, and he's a huge part of our program. And on the veteran side, Johnny Tyconic, just an energy guy and someone who's had the best season of his career so far. How happy sure. does that make you for him? Well, probably stem from his piece with you at the start of the year. I think so. He learned yeah. some pointers. Exactly, exactly. So I really, I've really seen a jump in his game since then. <laughs> and uh, uh, no, but you know what? He's another guy that's just growing, growing every year since he's been here. And I'm just really happy for him here in his third year now to really find his groove mm-hmm. and, and be one of our top defensemen there. And I think both physically and mentally, he's really growing here over the last couple of years. And, and he's showing that this season. Yeah, he mentioned mentality and just his mental game and how that's been a big factor for him this season especially. How do you think players develop in the mental game? I mean, from a coach that you've seen this over many years sure. and over uh, lots of different guys, how do you see the mentality grow from uh, freshman year to senior year? I think everybody's a little bit different, right? Everybody has a little bit of a different self-talk. Mm-hmm. And so I think what one of your jobs as a coach is to learn what that self-talk is for each individual and then help them understand that and grow from it. And and again, I think a lot of these guys, right, we've got NHL draft picks and everybody wants to play in the NHL in our conference. And so there's a lot of external pressure on these young players as well. So I think it's really just kind of learning how to deal with that, um, what's serving you well, what's not serving you, what's your self-talk like and how do you move forward with that? And then ultimately... How do you take the action necessary mm-hmm. to give yourself a chance of success? And I feel like Johnny's just really kind of understood that now and understands the, you know, he doesn't have to, to be somebody, you know, he can be Johnny Teutonic. And uh, he's really, I think, kind of accepted that and really been comfortable in his own skin this season. And, and he's playing, you know, the best hockey of his career, in my opinion. Another interesting note, shout out the game notes, Austin. Least penalized team in the NCHC. Has that been a point of emphasis for you guys? I didn't even know that. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, no, I think... Uh Again, in the past, right, we've, we've, uh, you know, you want to be competitive and, and the way it's officiated in our conference, sometimes it's, it's tough to, to not take penalties just from playing the game hard and, and you want to be, you know, you want to be tight and hard to play against, but obviously you don't want to go down the man advantage. So that's something we worked extremely hard on in training camp. And again, right, the less you're on the other teams on the power play, the better it is for your team. So it's been a point of emphasis for us and our guys are doing a great job to stay out of the penalty box. Speaking of power play, this team is third in the country at that category, 28.2%, just behind North Dakota in the league. How has that evolved in the special teams between last year and this year? Well, uh, again, I was just saying the other day at the press conference, our, our associate head coach, Dave Noel Bernays, done a tremendous job with the power play. That's that He's in charge of that. And, and, and like you mentioned from last year, we lost a lot of guys uh, on that previous unit that was pretty successful. And to do that and to still have the same amount of success speaks to your structure, your organization, and your plan for that to be effective. So a lot of credit to him and obviously our players as well, right? Buying into that concept. And I think we've established some things that are necessary to do to be successful in the mm-hmm. power play play and when you're dealing with your most skilled players it takes buy-in it takes buy-in them and, and, uh, and they're doing a great job with that and and coach Albernese uh, got them rolling next two series at home for the Mavericks against Minnesota De- Minnesota Duluth and then Miami the following week how important do these home wins feel to secure yeah I think every game in the NCHC is is important I think college hockey I was just visiting with a a former assistant coach in the NCAA who's now a head coach in the USHL. And that was one of the things that he talked about and joined about not coaching college hockey was that it wasn't every game is life or death. Right. Um, you know, in the game of hockey, there's a lot of different things that go into the outcome of the game. And so, but it's just so magnified because these games are so mm-hmm. important, right? So I think it's, you know, our players obviously know that they, they want to win, but also making sure they, you know, they don't play scared and they don't be right. fearful in how they play and that we can making sure we're executing out there and, mm-hmm. and and, and making the right play. So um, the, everybody knows the importance of the games. Um, so we, we know how crucial they are, but we also want to make sure that our guys are playing to their potential and and ultimately getting that flow state and playing their best hockey. What do you think the biggest part of the execution will be from the game plan to make sure you're in that top four come postseason? Yeah, uh, you, again, you got to execute. You got to be ready mm-hmm. to go. You got to go longer and harder than other teams are willing to go. So all of the above is necessary to, to find ways to win in this conference. And 
again, I think our guys have done a tremendous job at doing that. And, and, and we've got, we've got tough guys, like we got tough mentally and physically guys. We're talking about that the other day too, how important that is. And, and really what I think about mentally and physical toughness is to be able to do the right thing, no matter what the situation is, Mm -hmm. you know, both mentally and physically. And that's hard to do, right? When external circumstances happen, often that dictates how you act and, and behave. But if you can do the right thing mentally and physically in a tough situation, You've got some mental toughness. Speaking to this weekend, what will be the biggest keys for your team to come away with a series win? Again, I think just to, you know, again, we want to start start well and, and play well. And, and obviously, without giving away too much of our game plan for Duluth, we want to make sure that we execute what we've talked about all week mm-hmm. and practiced all week. Uh, very important that uh, you don't give a good team like that a chance to get rolling and and uh, so it's really important we, we stick to our game plan there. We, we stick to our identity there and, and then take it, uh, you know, one period of time. Well, we talk a lot about hockey. Let's talk sure. a little bit about you okay. from the personality side as well. I've got some nice questions for you. First one, if you were not coaching, what would you be doing? Oh, man. Uh, if I wasn't coaching, what would I be doing? Oh, man, you should have prepped me on these ones. Uh, I feel like you give me like a history teacher vibe. Like, <laughs> I feel like you could totally do that. Uh, yeah, you know, I'd love the summers off. <laughs> if I could be a teacher, that would be a nice, uh, I'm sure my family would be signed up for that one. Um <laughs> But yeah, you know what? I'm not sure. I, I think uh, I took business finance in school, uh, probably something something business-wise, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe a little bit of entrepreneurship or something like that, where maybe it, I think it would be tough to be in a normal sit-at-a-desk all day long yeah. job, but uh, uh, something like that. But you know what? I haven't, uh, I haven't thought too much about it since I love coaching so much. Yeah, no plan B. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Next one, a little bit easier. What's your favorite vacation spot? Oh man. Uh, you know what? We, we, we tend to get out to Palm Springs, California. My folks, my folks are out there sometimes, um, during the year. And we're really fortunate to have a good family friend that has a beautiful place out there that they let us use uh, when we go out there to visit my family. So, um, probably right now that's a, that's a sweet spot to get away to. And, uh, uh, but really any, uh, my wife's really big on traveling. So anytime mm-hmm. we can go, I, I have, have been guilty of not doing any vacations, but uh, I got to make sure that change is uh, here coming up. So the destinations are a little bit more Southern, not going anywhere more North than you usually do during the season. Yeah, definitely. I've, I grew up, uh, I grew up, uh, I grew up in a cold climate, so we're trying <laughs> to go South as much as we can, but, uh, definitely in the summertime, I'd, I'd, I'd really miss the mountains. I, I got to grow up, uh, my sister was a ski racer and so we had a lot of family time in the mountains growing up. Mm-hmm. So I definitely would love to get back to some mountains, whether it's in the summer or, uh, or spring skiing, that'd be great. Favorite NHL team. Oh man. You know what? I just, I, I don't really have a favorite team. I think, you know, with my position, I'm, I'm fortunate to know a lot of coaches in the NHL and, right. and you got friends in the NHL. And, uh, so usually you're kind of just cheering for whoever you have a relationship with. So mm-hmm. it depends, uh, you know, got some different coaches that I know all around the league. So you're always rooting for those guys to have success. Do you grow up with any certain team? Well, my gramps coached with the Winnipeg Jets back in the day when mm-hmm. I was younger. So I definitely, uh, you know, was a Winnipeg Jets fan when okay. he was coaching for them and got to go to some games and, and, uh, got to hop on a plane and spend some time with grandma and grandpa during, uh, during the season. So that was pretty cool. Best team meal to get. What are you picking? Oh man, we, again, we have some great food, uh, on the roads, but, oh, I'm probably, uh, you know, I've food for me is, uh, I'm always, always love to eat. So it's, uh, and I'm a big meat eater. So, you know, if we can get a really nice steak on the mm-hmm. road or, or, uh, some type of good meat, uh, uh, that's probably what I'm going with. Omaha is a good place for that too. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely some great recruiting uh, spots to yes, recruit. Yes, for, for sure. sure. For sure. Last question: Any superstitions? You know what? I used to have a few, but I the the more experience I get as a coach, I think the the less I'm superstitious because yeah. it can just get so daunting. You mm-hmm. know, right? And and I I, I got to practice what I preach to the players: being uh, process focused uh-huh. and, and not too worried. But there's definitely a few that if you if you get uh, doing well, you want to keep going. But I try not to. Now, there's so much things going on. It's kind of nice not to not to have to let something cramp your style if it doesn't go your way or, or something doesn't go. As not planned. wearing the same socks or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, not wearing the same socks every every game. <laughs> well, Coach, thank you so much. You can cheer on the Mavericks this weekend at Baxter Arena against Minnesota Duluth. As always, thank you for joining. This is Mavericks All Access. Thanks, Anna.